In the second part of the section B of the course about graph theory, we are going to see how and when to use quab in order to test for the significance of the correlation between the weights of two different layers of a network. We recall that in the first part of this lecture, we proposed to use linear regression in order to check whether two layers of a network had their link structures correlated. We saw also that it was not adequate to use the usual t-test to test for the significance of the coefficient beta since the weights of the links were correlated if the links were connected to the same node. So here we propose another test, which is the quad test, that will allow us to test for the significance of beta in the case of networks. So, the, what are the conditions to apply the Quab test? So here we need to have the links that are not connected to the same node to be independent. And then if we look at two different nodes, and then look at all the links that are incident to the first node and all the links that are incident to the second node, then the, the errors the group of errors associated to the first group and the group of errors associated to the same second group should have the same joint distribution. Here again we have two hypotheses, the hypothesis H0 stating that C and S are uncorrelated, meaning that beta is equal to zero, C and S being the links structure of the layers S and C, and then the alternative hypothesis stating that C and S are correlated. And then, as in every test, we reject H0 if the p-value is less than alpha. The question here is how to calculate the p-value for the Quab test. So the Quab test is based on permutation. The idea here is that if the links weights C and S are uncorrelated, then it doesn't matter if you regress S on C or on C prime, which would be obtained from the same distribution as C, since in any way they are uncorrelated. How, how do we obtain this C prime since we don't have the distribution of C? Then actually we take C as a sample of the original distribution of C and then we take C prime by shuffling the entries of C since C represents a sample of the original distribution. And then we compute a beta prime of the shuffled model corresponding to the to regressing S on C prime. And then if they are uncorrelated, then the beta prime should not be very different from the original beta. So the procedure here is to shuffle the entries of C n times into m shuffled matrices, then we compute all the corresponding betas, and then the p-value would be the proportion of the betas that are obtained that are larger in absolute value to the absolute value of the original beta. The question remains is how to reshuffle C while preserving its, its distribution because the idea is that we sh C prime should be obtained from the same distribution as C. So preserve the distribution of C means preserving importantly the dependent structure. So the dependent elements should be reassigned together. We know that the dependent links, that is the ones connected to the same node, are in the same row and column of the matrix C. So what we need to do is to change the entire row and column with the same index together. Here we have an example with a, two, with a simple two permutation. So one goes on three and three goes on one. Uh, we have to say here that it, these don't have necessarily to be reflexive. So three doesn't have to necessarily go on one if one goes on three, but here it's in this simple case, it's just an illustration. And then we see that, that the column and the row three 
has to be permutated together. So they would go on the the column three would go on the column one, and then and then the row three would go on the row one, and vice versa. And then we would obtain this matrix as C prime. We note here that permutations can involve up to all rows and columns and not only two, three, or four. And there are factorial and possible permutations. So this number grows stronger than exponentially as the size of the network grows. So the quap test becomes harder and harder to do if the network is large, or at least it's, it gets harder and harder to have a representative sample of the distribution if the network is very big. Of course, for illustrative purpose, we presented a simple case of the simple linear regression, but of course the quap can be used for multilinear regression, for the case of multilinear networks, and also we can use the quap test in order to test the significance of the correlation between two nodes attributes, but then we would have to use the line graph because quap usually is used on the links of, of networks.